Hey, what's up, Western Fortune viewers? I'm Owen Finch here, and I'm not gonna say I'm the Western Fortune champion anymore until I can find the Western Fortune championship. Because if I can't find it, what's the point of saying it? But I will find it. I know. I haven't really been looking, so that's why I can't find it. But let me get on to my review. This is gonna be my review of Knight of Champions from Sunday. I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday because I was too tired because um I went on a field trip yesterday and I had to get up at six in the morning and I didn't get home till two so um I had to get up and um I was too tired when I got home to make it. I still watched Raw but I kinda like wasn't really in the mood for videos. So in this video I'm gonna react the way I did for um, when I so it's gonna be like me talking from Night of Champions perspective. So the Raw right now hasn't even happened for me. So for those of you that did watch Raw, don't shit face me if um I don't say anything that hap if I say stuff at Night of Champions that make me sound like a fucking idiot. But yeah, this is Night of Champions 2012. So we start off with the uh Pre show when it shows Booker T being interviewed about the bull kick, and he says that the bull kick is a very dangerous move. And he says that he has, I think he said he's finished his investigation or something. Um, then we have, um, it shows a video package of Antonio Cesaro as the United States champion. Then they have the battle royal when the winner faces Antonio Cesaro for the United States championship. Now, this battle royal, and I was there in person, I should say, I was there in person. So I kind of maybe overreacted, but when you're actually at an event, you always overreact. Um, I think um, the funniest part was when everyone just teamed up on Heath Slater and eliminated him. Then eventually I was happy when Santino got out. Um, and then the primetime players got eliminated by Zack Ryder. Um, and then Tensai, it was down to Tensai and Ryder. Ryder went for the rough Ryder. Tensai went to count into a power bomb, and then Zack Ryder just eliminated Tensai and, uh, due, due to a hurricanrana. And then Zack Ryder won the match, and be, and he says that, uh, and Matt Stryker asks if he can carry this mo momentum going into Night of Champions. He says, woo, 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 and I said, you know it, because he showed the microphone to us. Them C we have CM Punk interview. Um... He never comes out for the interview. They try to get a word from him before the, the pre before the pre show was over. Paul Heyman comes and he's like, "Can we hear from WWE Champion?" And he's like, "He just did." Um, and then it show then the show actually starts. It actually show, it shows like a promo package about everything from Night of Champions, and then um, Jerry the JBL comes out to replace Jerry the Kin Lawler after what happened last Monday on Raw. Then we get on with the first match of the night. Um, it was The Miz defending the Intercontinental Championship against Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes, and Sin Cara. What a great way to start off the night. I thought this match was a perfect place. Um, before before I should mention, Miz comes out and says that it's not fair that he has to defend it against three opponents, that Booker T is against him and he's filing a complaint. Um, but this match was pretty good. It starts out with Miz and Cody taking control, then Rey and... Sinca it kind of starts out as like a tag team, 20 of tag team match. Then Ray and Sin Cara go to fight. Miz and Cody do do a little bit of an ambush. Then Ray, when Ray and Sin Cara do finally got, got to fight, that's when it got good. Like, um, that, then it, when Sin Cara went to do that elbow weight counters into a drop kick, um, I think Sin Cara maybe got, got a little bit of the be better of, um, the Miz. Uh, no, Rey Mysterio, but hopefully we'll see this match maybe next year at WrestleMania. Um, then Cody, then eventually Cody Rhodes is outside the ring, and he gets, um, taken out by Rey Mysterio by a scene at Centon. Um, outside the ring, Miz and, Rey and Sin Cara are in the ring, and they get, like, a power bomb. um, Power bomb. I think no. Cody Rhodes and Kyle and Miz comes in with the power bomb. Um, then um, eventually Ray hits the six one nine and the splash on Miz. Uh, I think it was Cody that broke it up. And then um, Sin Cara comes in with um, doing his doing his great moves and he goes to put a mask on Cody at, and Miz comes in with a backbreaker and then Sin Cara puts the mask on Miz. Cody goes for the crossroads. Miz comes comes up with the score question finale. 
and wins the match and retains the Intercontinental Championship. Not a bad way. Not a bad way. I think Miz maybe was the right person to go over. Um, like, and I wonder what's in plan for the Miz in the future. Then we have the prime time players and Eve backstage. The prime time players don't think it's fair that team friendship, which is Kane and Kofi Kane, no, not Kane and Daniel Bryan, um, got their tag team title shot. Then we hear some somebody screaming. And it's Caitlyn. She said that somebody attacked her while she was training. And Eve goes to get her some medical attention. Um, then we have Kofi Kingston and R-Truth defending the WWE Tag Team titles against Team Friendship. This was hilarious. Like, um, the match was okay. I'm going to say that. But this was more for comedy. This match was more for comedy. Um, at the end, um... Every, while all that stuff is going on, um, Kane and Kofi, Kofi Kingston goes to launch into um, Brian, but Brian shoves Kane. Then um, Brian and goes to do that leg drop. He misses. K Kane tags himself in. Brian gets upset by that and uh, keeps attacking Kane. Um, Kane just eventually shoves Brian while he's on the top rope. Um, and um, eventually Kane... Brian pushes Kane onto um, Kofi and he does like a knee drop on him and Kane pins Kofi and wins the match. So Team Friendship becomes the Tag Team Champions. And then they're both arguing who the Tag Team Champions are. So yeah, that was really funny. Um, I, I really enjoyed that segment. Then we have Booker T and Teddy Long backstage. Um, what ends up happening is um, Booker T... Is trying to decide how Caitlyn is, and Eve says that she can't compete. Teddy Lawn says that there has to be an opponent for uh, every title has to be on the line. Um, and Eve doesn't think that anyone deserved it. Booker T thinks that Eve has, and this is like a little present for Eve, so she he gets she gets the shot. Um, then we have Antonio Cesaro defending the United States Championship against Zack Ryder. Okay, match right here. What ends up happening is Zack Ryder can't hit the Broski boot because Oksana pulls Antonio outside the ring. They go back in the ring. Zack Ryder hits the rough. Zack and Antonio Zero hits an uppercut and hits the neutralizer and wins the match and retains the championship. So what? A whatever match right there. Then it's Del Rio and David Otunga backstage and um, oh, Rodriguez has his neck break off, brace off because he says it's starting to heal. So I guess they were faking the neck injuries, or Ricardo really did hurt his neck. So then um, they call him a uh, stupid old. Um, then we have Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton. This match was okay. I'm going to say that right now. This match was okay. I hear that Randy Orton told a fan, the fans, fuck off. Um, and because like, he was getting booed, and that's just not being able to take criticism. That's just not being able to take criticism. If you can't um, take criticism, like John Cena had to take criticism at WrestleMania. And if you can't take criticism, then maybe you should fuck off. But the like Randy Orton, the person is a fucking jackass. But um, Randy Orton, the wrestler, isn't that bad. Um, I will say this right now, though, that um, the match was uh, the match was okay. Ziggler and Orton had a pretty good pace match. They when they got outside, Orton hit the DDT, and I thought Ziggler, I thought Orton was just gonna get Ziggler in the win. RKO, but Orton just goes for the cover. Ziggler gets his foot on the low. Orton goes for the RKO. Ziggler goes for the sleeper hold, and then Orton pu pushes Ziggler up in the air and hits him with an RKO and wins the match. So I think the one guy won this match. To be honest with you, Ziggler should have won this match because Dolph Ziggler. Is being built up more than Randy Orton is. Dolph Ziggler is being pushed. And if this is how you see it to push a guy, I don't see it. You need to push Dolph Ziggler better. I think the only real thing that he's done since winning Money in the Bank is probably making Chris Jericho packing. Sent, it's probably when he sent Chris Jericho packing. That's about it, though. He has done nothing else since then. All he does is get attempt to cash in the briefcase... Um, and get, get, and then end up not cashing it in and get laid out, or he loses matches like this. Um, 
Like, Jericho at SummerSlam was understandable because that proved that Chris Jericho didn't lose his touch. But Randy Orton, Randy Orton did not need this win because he obviously didn't lose his touch. So I just thought that was pretty fucking stupid. Right there. No, no, not fucking stupid. Fucking awful. Then we have Layla defending the Divas Championship against Eve. This match was, uh, and eh, whatever. Um, I kind of looked away for one. I didn't watch this match. I just looked away for one second. And I see that Eve won, so I don't really know how Eve won the match. <laughs> Daniel Bryan's <coughs> backstage. And, um... He said, I'm the tag team champions. I'm the tag team champions. I'm the tag team champions. Um, and then Kane saying oh, he's the tag team champions as well. Um, then AJ's upset that they won. So then, um, oh my, holy fuck. Um, so then Dr. Shelby makes him, like, say stuff. And um, he, Daniel Bryan congratulates Kane. He, Dr. Shelby asked Kane when he has to say, Kane walks away. <laughs> um, then what ends up happening is um, Daniel Bryan um, is saying why he is the true tag team champion. Kane comes in with the thinner gateway, dumps it on Bryan, and says, I'm going to Disneyland! <laughs> and it's supposed to be Disney World, but... It's still funny because that's just Kane. So then he's saying I'm the tag team champion still. So I thought that was pretty funny. I, I, I'm i really looking forward to this tag team championship reign. This could be a, the funniest one probably in a while. Um, then we have Sheamus defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Alberto Del Rio. Before the match starts, Booker T comes out and unbans the bull kick. Um... So that actually was pretty obvious that Sheamus was going to win. I still like the match. It's just... They've had so many matches, and they don't really click well together. I'm going to say that right now. I said that at Money in the Bank. I said that... I Actually, I didn't make a SummerSlam re review. I will be making it that eventually. Um, but I said that also tonight. They just don't gel well together. This feud has been dragging on for too long. Since pretty much the night after Sheamus won the world title. That's how long this feud's been going on. That's the only person I think Sheamus has faced besides Ziggler and Bryan. Um, you need to get Sheamus somebody else to face. Is that, is that why, though, that Dario is still in the mix? Because they can't find Sheamus somebody to face? Because I can name somebody right now. Randy Orton. Um, I know that he's a face, but I would prefer him than uh, Shame, than Dario. Um, I'm gonna say, um, Jericho's gone, so. Oh, I know, Wade Barry, maybe Jinder Mahal, anybody. Cause this, cause I don't want to see these guys have another match. Because Del, uh, Del Rio did get him in the cross on break, and it was funny when he tied him in the ropes. Um, I actually did believe that he was gonna win those after the sec second one. But then he goes for like a big kick in the corner. Sheamus just hit the bull kick and win, and there's not even a cash in or anything. Um,. So I don't really see why you're going to keep this feud going, if you are. Um, just end the feud, have Sheamus feud with maybe Wade Barrett or Randy Orton. I won't really care, I just don't want to see this feud anymore. Then we got Punk defending the WWE Championship against John Cena. This was fucking genius. I'm going to give myself a round, I'm going to give this match a round of applause. What a fucking match. What a fucking main event. Oh, I, this isn't the best match they ever had. But this is probably the great a great match to walk off the show from. Um, this gave me something to talk about. I really like this match, though. I liked Punk. My friend Adam Russell was watching the pay-per-view, because we all went to the pay-per-view. And when Punk was holding the belt, he like... Fight, guys! Fucking fight! 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 Um, so yeah, that was really funny how he was doing that. Then they do fight, and they do have a great match. The, the, like, they have a great pace in the ring first. Then Punk does a suicide dive on Cena. They fight outside the ring a little bit. Cena suplexes Punk from the um, barricade onto the floor. 
Eventually, Cena actually Cena did see him punk suicide dive. I should also mention too that Cena is wearing pink because throughout the night they promote that they are in line with somebody for the breast cancer. So I guess people's boobs are gonna be hurt. And not no disrespect, I'm just saying what breast cancer is. Um, but I want to say this right now that I don't want I I will not care. If they keep showing the same commercial over and over and over again, um, like they did with the bullying campaign, I think we I saw that bullying campaign so many times that now we're gonna see the same one again, um, so many times. Just make it, just make it, just keep changing the person who speaks every time. I understand why they had to show it. I'm gonna show it tonight, and I'm gonna say I'm last night on Raw because some people didn't see the pay per view on Sunday. But don't keep showing the same commercial every single week. I'm going to say that right now. Because this person does speak. I forget what she says though. So, um, I'm just saying no disrespect. Just don't show the same thing all the time. Um, but then, um, so yeah, Cena was in pink and the rope was pink. Um, then um, the second rope was pink anyways, I should say. But then Cena and Punk do get back in the ring. Cena um, goes for the FU. Punk counters, goes for the go to sleep. Cena goes for the STFU. Punk goes for the Intercontinent device. Cena goes for the actually the fight by Uncle Shuffle. Um, and Punk kicks him in the ribs before he gets him. Then, um, I don't know how Punk always sees him too. I think he, then eventually Punk would hit a go to sleep on Cena. Kick out. Um, eventually Cena got tired of just doing the you can't see me. And just did the five now, and just did it with a fist. Then, then he does the FU. Punk kicks out. Then, um, Punk gets the STFU in. Punk gets to the ropes. Eventually, Punk does the lock bottom, which was pretty awesome. I thought the lock was gonna come out, but I think they just did that to tease like the lock was coming out. I thought Block was gonna be there too. Block was no. Um, then eventually Cena hits the FU. Punk kicks out. Then, um. Cena does a German suplex from off the uh, top turnbuckle, and Punk and the, they get the pin, and we thought and Cena wins the match, and I was like, what? Off a fucking German suplex? That's what me and Adam were like. Then um, the referee reverses it. Well, he doesn't reverse it, but he declares it a draw because both of their shoulders were down. So then, every, and then Punk hits Cena off the head with the boat and leaves, and I was pretty happy with that. Um. Was it the greatest pay-per-view ever? No. WrestleMania was so better, but this is probably a close second to WrestleMania. Um, I really did enjoy this pay-per-view. Maybe because I was there. Um, that might be why, but I still enjoyed this pay-per-view. Um, and I actually would like to say right now that this is going to be probably my last pay-per-view. Probably watching with Adam and Cameron Bolte. Um... I'm so we'll be making pay-per-views. It's just we're not going to be seeing each other for the pay-per-views for a little while. Probably not until WrestleMania. I don't. I don't review them with them. It's just it's kind of going to get weird. Um, but uh, I will be back tomorrow with my raw review. I just want and I know I've been a I ask questions, but I I actually am going to predict that they will have a rematch probably at Hell in a Cell and that Hell in a Cell poster I should say with Punk looks badass. Look that up if you haven't. But that's pretty much it, guys. So, yeah, Raw Review tomorrow. Possibly the SpongeBob Review on Thursday for the Owen Talkinator. TNA and Superstars on Friday. And maybe SmackDown. Um, and Saturday, maybe Saturday morning slam if I get up in time. Because I don't, don't have the ability to get up at that time. But that's pretty much it, guys. Peace out.